Hi everybody, it's Emily. It's week 60 and we're talking about sweetheart self-care. It's just so important to make sure that um, you have a role in your relationship. As silly as it sounds, sometimes the uh, non-trans individual in a relationship, it can make it feel like it's not about your relationship. It can sometimes feel like it's all about the transition itself. And it's so important to do things that do take care of yourself and who you are and do things that are just about you and not about, you know, binders and packers and needles and sharps containers and oh my, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's sometimes, it's so important to just think about yourself sometimes. So this week we're talking about things that we do um, to take care of ourselves. So, um... Basically, when this whole thing first started, I was afraid that um, I didn't have a, a role in this play. I didn't have a part in this process. And there have been things that have reinforced that fact. Um, I'll share something that happened at the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference. It kind of bummed me out. Um, there was a workshop um, that was, it was like a top surgery show and tell. So it was guys showing their scars, telling where they um, got surgery, how they raised money for it, that kind of stuff. And it, you were only allowed to go into the workshop if you identified as male. So I couldn't go in with Chance. And that really bummed me out because it made me feel like... It made me feel like I wasn't a role. I wasn't an important part of this process. It made me feel like oh, well, I'm not the one having the surgery, so I don't matter. And I understand why they had that caveat. I understand. But it still made me feel like shit when it first happened. It um, made me feel really bad when it first happened. And I just kind of waited outside for like an hour and a half for him to get done. Um, there were a couple workshops that had um, kind of rules that only certain people were allowed to go in. And I get it, and I don't get it at the same time. So that's a different story for a different day. Um, but basically, there's been instances such as that that make me feel like I'm not welcome. That being cis, I'm not welcome. And that feeling sucks. So there are just some things that you have to do to take care of yourself and to remind yourself that you're part of this relationship and this process and you're an integral part actually you're a very important part of this process and um, it's also nice when your partner reminds you that you're a special part of this process um, so the biggest thing is to take time alone to even if you're not by yourself to just take time with your partner and not your trans partner, if that makes sense. So just go out for a dinner date and don't talk about top surgery. You know, for a whole night, don't talk about it. And take a little bit of a trans vacation. <laughs> you know, just be alone together. And again, you can also be alone, alone, you know, real alone. And, you know, I like to read a lot. I, um, I focus myself on that. I like to knit, so I do those things. I also run a, a feminism page here in uh, Philadelphia. It's called Guerrilla Feminism Philadelphia, if anybody wants to look it up. Um, it's pretty rad. There's a main guerrilla feminism in, um, Wisconsin, I believe. And this is kind of like our little branch out here, and it's a good place for me to focus my energy. If I need a break, I, you know, I'll go research for an article I want to post. I'll go find some pictures I want to share. And it gives me my own thing. You know, it's my own thing. And it's not tied in to anybody else's thing. <laughs> so it's nice for me to kind of refocus and center and do that. And um, the same thing with the books that I read. I read a lot of books on um, feminism, gender studies, and um, also my, my line of, well, my hopeful line of work, the line that I'm interning in right now, um, is with the prison system. So I read a lot of stuff like that. 
along those lines, it helps me to uh, focus in and remember who I am and why I'm here. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, and it's really personal, but it's really important, and I can't talk about coping without talking about um, how I used to cope and how it wasn't healthy. So I'm going to trigger warning this part of the video if anybody um, has a history of self-harm. I would say to end the video here. Um, so, I, um, from the time I was about 12 or 13, I, um, I self-harmed. I self-mutilated. I, um, would cut or burn or a combination of the both. Um, and that was how I coped. And, um, it went on like that for a very long time, and I bounced from a psychologist and psychiatrist to another, and back and forth, and on meds and off meds, and i um, happy to report that currently, at the age of 25, um, I haven't self-harmed in, um, like, over a year, I want to say, so that's pretty good, probably, probably almost a year. Um, and I'm seeing a regular psychiatrist, and I'm on a um, medicine regimen, and I am actually pretty happy most of the time, except for normal shit that happens in my life. So I guess I wanted to share that issue with you because it is important to take care of yourself, because you do matter, and you're wonderful, and you're beautiful, and you're fabulous, and don't ever, ever forget that. Ever. Don't ever internalize and let it fester and uh, take it out on yourself the way that I used to. Um, it takes a lot of strength to recognize that you need help. It takes a lot of strength to recognize that uh, you're not happy in a relationship or you're feeling left out in a relationship. And those things don't make you not supportive. Those things make you strong enough to recognize that you want your relationship to last and there's something happening that might not allow that. So if your partner comes to you, if you're a trans guy watching this and your partner comes to you, you know, don't, don't jump on them right away and say you're not being supportive. Just listen and think, what can I do to make this about us and not just about me and my transition and um, the transiness of it all? And it gets so hyper-focused sometimes that it's hard to see the bigger picture. So I guess it's kind of what I'm going for. Look for the bigger picture, take care of yourself, and um, take care of each other, too. Alright, that's all I'm going to ramble on about today. Um, we did go to the Mazzoni Center today. Just got back recently for Chance's blood work. Um, so he got his blood drawn. His T levels, um, he's afraid his T levels are kind of low because his moods have been kind of sporadic. So we're going to see when that comes back, what's going on with that. I'll keep everybody updated and I will see you guys next week. Bye.